High W Magazine. I'm Victor Glamour. This is my life in parties. I was born in Haiti in the late 70s. And we moved to New York when I was three. We moved to Queens. I was this young fat kid and I just loved to like, you know, read magazines, watch TV, like hang out with my mom and cook. Very chatty, very Gabby, and <laughs> I still am. My sister had a subscription to W, and I do remember that like vividly with like the models on the cover, like Kate Moss, Christy Turlington, Naomi and Versace. Like I remember that vividly, like those big, heavy, you know, sort of Bibles arriving. And they were very much a big influence on everything that I remember about fashion. My family like is always about sort of style and presentation, the art of dressing up. So it was just who I was, my father's style. A leather coat and like a high-waisted jean and like the shirt is open. He was always sort of like moisturized and gleaming and had like great jewelry, pristine. When I was in high school and I started to venture out a little bit more. I started like sneaking quietly away to like Manhattan and just started to like dip my toe and sort of look around. And that's when I feel like it all started coming out. At first I wanted to be a chef and then I got into fashion. I transferred from FIT. I went to cooking school for three days. I got my chef's whites and whatever and the hat and the knives and I was just like, no. <laughs> and after three days I was like, period, this is over, let's move on. When I came to FIT, I was like, this is where I belong. My first job while I was at FIT as an intern was interning for Patrick Robinson. Did all the like grunt work. The first fashion show I ever worked on, my role was to lint brush the girl's shoes. It was just like such a dream. I was on like cloud nine, I loved it. So I went to KCD in the meatpacking district on 14th street and I was wearing a green um, cashmere sweater, my father's, and I was carrying a crocodile violin case. I was hired on the spot and I worked at KCD for five and a half years, like in New York and in Paris, doing Versace, Hi Donatella. And it was incredible, like I loved it. I call KCD like my fashion finishing school, my master. I left KCD um, and I, you know, walked a couple of arrondissements over to <laughs> the Paco Rabanne and it was incredible to, you know, work in like a French atelier and to, you know, be creating clothes again. It was extraordinary. I started working for Mr. Tommy Hilfiger, which was so much fun. All of these different experiences and places that I've worked, I take things from all of those things. There's learnings from everywhere you go. My CFDA Vogue Fashion Fun experience. One of the people I went with was Ashley Graham. We made this dress for Ashley and it was like a eureka moment, you know, like she looked so incredible. I was just like, oh, like I should be doing that. All of the women that want to you know, show their body and celebrate their body. From the Fashion Fund, it was really this focus of, you know, dressing all people. After doing and completing the CFDA Fashion Fund, I had to figure out how to stage and put on presentations, which is something I'd never done before. I want to create the vibe of like, when you come over to my house and I roast a chicken and we have a fun dinner, like I want these presentations to be like that. It really culminated and I think they took off and created like an environment at the sunken living room at Spring Place where you just walk in, you're just like, wow. And you can see and touch the clothes, but it was just really fun. We had drinks, we had great music. And to me, that was the vibe. And one show that we did there was they were on mannequins and we did these incredible sort of like hair sculptures. Aretha Franklin died that August. I'm a very big Aretha Franklin fan. We played the entire album on repeat to her sort of gospel live performance, Amazing Grace. The hair sculptures were inspired by the Detroit Hair Wars and they're made out of flowers and wigs. I was not expecting, you know, the Whoopi Goldberg to come to this presentation. And I was just like, oh my God, it's Whoopi Goldberg. Met Gala with Dominique Jackson. It was the first time that I had dressed someone like under my name for the Met. It was just like incredible to create something for her. A dream because she's tall 
and her legs are endless. And so we really went with this sort of like chic showgirl. Her, the cape was in separate. So she got out of the car, put it on, and it was this incredible moment. And you know, it's just like sending like, you know, the baby off to the prom. One of my favorite mantras is new business starts after six. Where have you been? What have you seen? What are people wearing? Like you just get inspired when you go out and you make new everything. Going out in Paris. When I lived there, I was um, a regular at Les Barons and Paris Paris. And um, I think I created a lot of mischief at the Hemingway for years. So one night, a very good friend of mine who shall remain nameless, um, we put a bottle of champagne in her like big Chanel bag. And then we go to Paris Paris, we slide in, we get it, we sit down, we pop our bottle, we ask the waitress for glasses, we get glasses, we're having a whole moment. And someone comes over and they're like, where'd you get that? You have to leave. I was like, what do you mean? I come here all the time. Like, you didn't get that here. You have to leave. And I was like, How, what do you mean? They're like, we don't serve that brand of champagne. And we were like, oh, and um, we left. <laughs> New York in the early 2000s was my moment, quite honestly. We went to the Beatrice a lot. The Beatrice was really the place where it was like our cheers. We were really free to be extremely naughty. The gimlets were deadly, but I think they were deadly is because I drank them continuously for like six hours. What I loved about it was just like all of our friends, oh my God, like we had this moment together. Is there a Met After Party sticks on my mind? Pharrell was DJing. We're like dancing, covered in sweat. You see like red hair popping up and down. Grace Connington is dancing. Anna is dancing. People are like, what's going on? Ah, oh, that's me and um, Puffy at the Met. You know what I love about Puffy's parties is the music is great, the alcohol is flowing, and everyone's having a great time. You're just really taken care of. My era was great. From those two places that I went to, the dive bars that I went to, to the gay bars I went to, to the hip hop clubs I went to, I just like going out. I like to celebrate my birthday. I think I did like my 21st at Hooters. Like my grandmother was there. There was one like dinner at Il Buco in the, in the basement restaurant that was, the reason why it's memorable because it was flooded. Flash floods, flooded. Flooded the, and we still had the dinner and it was so much fun. My 40th birthday. My husband and I, we went to Egypt and did this like Nile River boat cruise thing. On the actual birthday, like I woke up on the Nile and like I opened my eyes and I saw like this incredible temple at 4 a.m. and you're gonna see, you know, the sunrise. I think we depleted all of their supplies of Scheherazade white wine. If I ever write my memoirs, the title's gonna be No Time for Tears, a story by Victor Glumeau. That is my motto in life. It's like, get on with it, do it, figure it out, you know, just keep going. Fashion is hard. For me, it's really about checking my ego, enjoying it, and really doing the work. Thank you so, so, so much, W Magazine. This has been My Life in Parties. See you soon, sweeties. Bye.